Hi guys, I'm Priyanka. Welcome to my channel. In earlier video, I have explained you the example of JSON file. And in this video, I will show you how we can parse JSON and extract the value in UiPath. So if you have not watched my earlier video, then I'll suggest you to please watch it as I've explained the JSON example that I'm going to use in this video. So you can find the link in the description box. UiPath is providing two activities to deserialize JSON, which is deserialize JSON used to pass JSON object and deserialize JSON array used to pass JSON array. So in this video, I will show you how we can use deserialize JSON activities and pass different JSON files. But before moving ahead, we have to install JSON related activity in our workflow. To do that, we have to go to manage package, go to all packages, we can search JSON or web. And we have to download this uipath.web.activities and we are good to go. So let's move on to implementation. For that, I've considered four use cases or we can see that four different JSON format. So first one is this. This JSON file is object of string, integer, float and a boolean. So we will try to parse all of these data in UiPath. To do that, as usual, we'll, we'll, we will create one sequence and in this, I will read the text file using read text activity. And I will give a JSON file to this activity as an input and I will create a variable to store the content called JSON input. So this is a file name and this is the output. So this variable will be input to deserialize JSON activity. So deserialize JSON activity takes an input in a string format and convert that into a JSON object. When we drag a deserialized JSON activity, it by default takes a JSON object as a type. And we are storing our JSON object as in JSON underscore output. Now we have to access this data and we can access this JSON value by using its key. To access the value, we can simply pass the key to our JSON object created by deserialized JSON activity. Also, we can access value by using a select token method and it can be written as a JSON object dot select token followed by the key in double quotes. In this way, we can access the string number, boolean and fraction data. So let's run the workflow. So we got name, we got email, we got our integer value, fraction value, boolean value and done. So let's move on to the second JSON format, which is nested JSON format. So this is a JSON, nested JSON object. And in this example, I'm trying to access the city value, which is London. So to access the city value, first we will read the JSON file by using read text file activity and pass the content that is JSON string to the deserialized JSON activity. So we have a JSON output as in JSON object ready to access. So these two activity will be same for all example. Okay. Now to access the city value, I have to access the address JSON object followed by a key city. So we can access this using JSON output, which is a JSON object address and then followed by city. So let's run the workflow and check the output. So here's the output. So moving on to this third example, which is a 
array object so for example i have to access a name value okay these name values of each object of student array so this is a student array and i have to access this name values so to access that like earlier i have to first of all uh, read the text file using read text file activity i have to mention the path file name i have to uh, create the output which is a json input that will be input to json deserialize json activity and it will generate the json object which is json underscore output and now uh, to access each value we will be using for each loop as we are accessing the values of student array so in for loop uh, we will pass a json object followed by a student in double quotes so we are passing our array in this for each loop a json array so we need to make sure that to select uh, the json j token as a type argument and if you not find this in a drop down so just we have to browse types and type j token and we can select this yeah so then inside body of for each loop we can just simply print our item so it will give a whole object like a whole object but we want to access the name value so we will give item of name so which will written that so which will written name one by one so let's go ahead and run the workflow so it is giving so it's giving the object uh, then after that it will give a name again it will give a second object and it will give a name So let's uh, see the last example of deserialized JSON activity. It is of same type uh, JSON format, which is an array object, but it is a bit complex structure. Also, it contains a key with the same name, if you can see here. So let's try to access uh, this. And uh, so, so we will get the re we should get the re uh, result as a request not found. Okay, so how we can access uh, the value of this key? If you look closely, Mesa is a type of string key value pair inside this object, and this object is inside this array. We can differentiate uh, array. Uh, we can differentiate between array and uh, object by using uh, by brackets okay so to access this first we have to access this then we have to access this and then this okay so this is how we can access uh, Our value so JSON is JSON uh, JSON object followed by followed by this and uh, this okay. so rest are the same as uh, we need a text file using uh, the text file activity use the serialized json activity and uh, we just need to make sure that uh, we should uh, select uh, the j token as a type argument for uh, for each loop yeah so let's run the workflow and uh, see if we got uh, 
the value of this key or not. Yeah, so we are we are trying to access this value. So we got uh, this whole object. And after that, we got this value request not found. So that's all for today. Uh, I hope this will help you to parse a complex JSON format. Uh, thanks for watching my video. Stay tuned for next video, uh, which will be based on deserialized JSON array in which I will parse a complex JSON array in UiPath. Thank you.